Let's take a look at our top selections. The $150,000 California Cup Sprint is the last of five stakes races for Cowbreds on Saturday at Santa Anita and a very deep, evenly matched field racing six furlongs on the main track at Santa Anita enter the Cal Cup Sprint, including last year's winner, Fashionably Fast. Let's take a look at the field for the Cal Cup Sprint and a field of 11 entered this race. Fashionably Fast returning from a layoff for trainer Dean Pedersen is will be one of the favorites. So will number six, Loudmouth, who is in razor sharp form. Brickyard Ride, who is pure speed. And then on the outside, we have Oliver Giaminetti and Rookie Mistake. A very deep competitive field. That's the case with most of these Cal Bread Stakes races on Saturday. And the Cal Cup Sprint is certainly no exception. So what do you do with Fashionably Fast? Well, the first thing you have to do is recognize that he's arguably the best horse in the field. He's a four-time stakes winner. He's won seven races, nearly $500,000, and he is good when he fires. The problem with Fashionably Fast is this. We haven't seen him since last August. He's coming into the Cal Cup Sprint off a layoff, whereas a year ago when he won this race, he was coming in off a recent stakes victory. So can Fashionably Fast fire his best shot first time back? Dean Pedersen, his trainer, believes he can, and we know that Fashionably Fast is good enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at his win last year in the Cal Cup Sprint. He was already in top form, Fashionably Fast was, coming in off a front-running win in the Cary Grant, and this time around, well, he came back and did it again. He won his, it was his third consecutive stakes win, Fashionably fast. This guy is tough as nails in the lane. That's a good horse that's trying to run him down, a horse by the name of Lieutenant Dan. And fashionably fast dug in, he fought back, and he won that race. So he hasn't been out since August. And you have to wonder what is his mental frame of mind? How about his physical condition? Talking to Pedersen early this week, and he is convinced not that fashionably fast will win because. No trainer wants to go into a race saying, I'm going to win this race. All Pedersen is confident of is this. Fashionably Fast is going to fire. He is fit for his comeback. He is mentally fresh, and he knows that a race is imminent. He was schooled in the paddock on Tuesday. After going to the gate several times recently to remind him what a gate is all about, the starting gate, and by the time that he left the paddock on Tuesday, Pedersen said that Fashionably Fast was revved up and ready to go. He knows that a race is coming soon. He's ready to rock and roll, Fashionably Fast is. And if he runs his race, he can pop up and win this first start back for Pedersen. I still suspect that he might need a race to get rid of the cobwebs, but I could be wrong. And I picked him second, Fashionably Fast. But the horse I like and a horse I expect to vie for favoritism is number six, Loudmouth. Loudmouth was claimed for 50000 a couple years ago, and it turned out to be a dynamite claim by trainer Steve Knapp and his owners. And Loudmouth, since shortening up to one turn, he has turned into a tiger. Loudmouth won his last two starts in relatively highly rated fashion, a 91 buyer speed figure in both his recent starts, including his most recent start that we're going to take a look at right now, and it was in the Cary Grant in November at Del Mar. Seven furlongs for Cowbreds and Loudmouth in the hot pink on the outside. He is going to wear down, take the 101. Boy, this is another bulldog. Some of these Cowbreds, you can just look at the way they run and go, that is a racehorse. He wants to beat you. And by the way, take the 101 is a very good horse. He's kind of underexposed, but take the 101 is a top horse that Loudmouth wore down. So Loudmouth goes into the Cal Cup sprint with a current racing advantage over fashionably fast. Now, what about the pace of the race? Well, the pace of the race is going to be set by a horse named Brickyard Ride. Brickyard Ride, a son of Clubhouse Ride, whose trainer Craig Lewis describes him as a quarter horse. So if he's a quarter horse, then why wasn't he on the lead last time out? Let's take a look at Brickyard Ride, his most recent start, and watch post position number four. In the pink silks, he did not break very well. He got shuffled out of it. He took up into the turn, and that was the end of it 
for Brickyard Ride. Brickyard Ride is a pedal to the metal speedster who goes to the front and then dies home. I don't think he's good enough to win this race, but I do know this. If he breaks cleanly on Saturday, he will set it up for somebody coming from behind. And Lewis has this race covered with a couple of long shots, Brickyard Ride on the front end, and a horse that I might gamble on if he starts at a price, and that's number seven, Club Aspen. The reason being is Club Aspen has the exact opposite running style of his stablemate, whereas Brickyard Ride runs on the lead, Club Aspen sits back and rallies from behind. Will he get pace to run at? Of course he will, because Brickyard Ride is in the field. Ultimately, the race goes through loudmouth and fashionably fast. But if Club Aspen, who was flat given a race last time out, and when I say give a race, he needed it. It was a prep. It was designed to prepare him for the Cal Cup sprint. So Club Aspen, even though he finished fifth last time out in an open allowance race against open company, that race was nothing more than a segue into the Cal Cup sprint, which has always been his comeback target. So I guess what I'm saying is with the race under his belt, pace to run at, don't let Club Aspen get by at a big price, and he should be a big price. But when all is said and done, the Cal Cup sprint, well, it goes through the razor sharp loudmouth and the bat class comebacker. His name is fashionably fast. That's race number nine. Saturday at Santa Anita.